Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to STST. Thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for clicking play. I am an ex-flat earther. Yes, you heard that right. And I now use this channel to try and fight against the misinformation that is spreading around the globe. I do this once a week. And if that is something that you are interested in, please do make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about a common misconception and something that just draws people in. Most flat earthers, again, will just hear this information and it will confirm their bias. Oh yes, of course, I'm right. Without actually researching and wondering why this happens. And that is, why do satellites and the ISS not melt in the thermosphere? Now the thermosphere is quoted as being around 2000 degrees Celsius and there are metals such as aluminium used on satellites and on the ISS and its melting point is 660 degrees. So to a flat earther, thermosphere 2000 degrees, metal object in the thermosphere melts below that point. This must be fake, it can't work things would melt. Now I do understand and get it. I used to think exactly the same. It just, it's logic, isn't it? At first, the fact that something's melting point is below the temperature of where this object is. So therefore it should melt. But there are a few things that we actually do need to look into in regards to heat and temperature. So I'm going to do a little demonstration in a moment. And I hope that you can understand that the fact that space is a near on vacuum, that there are no particles or molecules to transfer heat energy. But we'll do a little demonstration and then we'll come back to it. This oven has been preheated to 100 degrees Celsius. So I can quite easily put my hand within this oven and not get my hand burned. So that is 100 degrees Celsius and I can have my hand in there quite, quite comfortably. I'm now gonna preheat this to 225 and come back. What I'm also going to do is boil a kettle. I've already pre-boiled it so it shouldn't take long. So this is now 100 degree Celsius water. We'll just fill some of that up into the pan. And then what happens when I dip my hand into this? Well, I'm not even going to try because I know full well that I will severely, severely burn my hand if I was to put my hand in that 100 degree water. There are a lot more particles and molecules to be able to transfer the heat. Whereas obviously in here, because this is just air, very little particles to transfer the heat. Still going up to 225. And it's very, very easy for me to hold my hand inside there. Another good example actually is when you get out of the shower. If you ever have a shower and it's cold indoors, you come out and it's freezing because you're wet and then you have to quickly dry yourself off. And it's the same reason why we sweat. Isn't biology incredible? So when we sweat, we get covered in water and then that water has many more particles and molecules that the heat can transfer through than if you just had air touching your skin. So it all just correlates in the very fact that the thermosphere has very little particles and molecules does mean that that heat does not transfer through into the metal of either the ISS or satellites. So this whole charade of no metal could ever survive up there. The temperature is way above melting points. That has been thoroughly debunked. There is no air up there. So there is no way for the heat to transfer to you. It's the same reason why I say to some flat earthers, why on earth do you think we have a dome up there when there is no air to be contained? Because all of the air is nearer Earth's surface. 
So why would we need a dome all that way up there? Because they think gas pressure needs containment. There is no gas pressure up there to even be contained. So as you can see, what I'm trying to suggest is, is the fact that the ISS, yes, it's in the thermosphere and its potential kinetic energy is this, 2000 degrees. But that is not what you feel. You would actually, if you were up there yourself in that temperature, you would still feel cold because there are no particles to transfer that potential energy onto you. Another great point actually, which Culture Cats has given me, and he is the guy that basically put the seed in my brain that there's, well, more than a possibility, the earth isn't flat, but the seed was put in that there's a possibility that I might be wrong. So Culture Cats, thank you so much. And he has actually been such a mentor to me um, ever since I've left. He has always been there for me as a friend, and I really do appreciate that. The support he's given me has been amazing. So thank you, Culture Cats. What he did say and what he used to say to his students would be to imagine a sparkler. We all know the ones that you have on like bonfire night, firework night, you light it, and there's sparkles, sparklers. These are basically shards of metal, basically, that are falling off, and they can actually be between one and 3,000 degrees in temperature. Yes, of course, if one of these little particles touches your hand, it will sting for a brief moment, but it will probably barely even leave a mark. Don't quote me on that. Please always wear gloves and use all the protection suggested when using sparklers. Don't try this at home. But if when that sparkler went out and you even waited 30 seconds, so there was no sparks, nothing, and you was to actually touch the sparkler then, even though the temperature is about 10% of what it was when it was a light, you are going to burn your hand much more significantly by actually putting your hand on the sparkler than you would if one of those two or three thousand degree particles touched your hand. It's quite simple once you can start to try and get your head around it. And it is just trying to start getting your head around it that is the problem. But I did it, we can all do it. And I know that flat earthers do watch my content. So please do just think to yourself, ah, there is another thing that has just been confirmed that does debunk my claim that metal could not exist within these temperatures of space because we've just explained and actually had a nice demonstration as to why they can. They're so far apart that this energy cannot get transferred. Even in 2000 degree temperature up there, you would feel cold. Thank you very much if you did get to the end there. Again, please do subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. If you would really like to help the channel grow, please share me onto some social media. I'm really going for it on the channel now, so all your support is incredible. Leave a comment, let's interact, let's get this video out there to more flat earthers so they can say, am I wrong?